dear students a warm welcome to online session this session we talk about cloud service models and cloud ecosystem concepts clearly we will talk in this uh, online lecture uh, let us share the screen with the powerpoint presentation topics to be covered in this video session are what are cloud service models like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service so these three terms considered as a cloud computing service models and we discuss about cloud ecosystems and how the cloud ecosystems will enable these topics will discuss in what is data center how the data center structure works uh, well, we will talk in this session a data center is a physical infrastructure that means that it is on premises infrastructure which can maintain a set of a large amount of infrastructure we can set up in a remote location on premises location and whose space or room is called as a data center the uh, data data center can build with a huge amount of infrastructure like servers like network components like various sub stacks so this is considered as a data center so the data center will play a vital role in cloud computing techniques for providing virtualization concepts or boosting the virtualization over the network we use data centers very effectively in cloud computing technologies in case of data centers we use one concept a fundamental concept that is called as a scaling what is scaling scaling is nothing but it is the ability to easily add or subtract computers or storage resources based on the requirement that is called as a scalability so here scalability is one of the basic requirement for any data center establishment that will automatically scale up or scale down the size or the resources or the storage of a data center so by adding new or by removing the existing resources or cloud computing resources in from the data center so scalability will play a vital role for increasing or decreasing the resources over the data center so data center will build with typically a collection of servers clusters which are typically built with large amount of servers or wide range of millions or thousands of servers that means that always cloud data center runs with tons or thousands or millions of servers which can be built physically in a huge space So on premises that is called as a data center whereas super computers is a computer a separate data form is used in the super computer while a data center will use only disks on the server nodes plus memory for the storage and cache and database temporary data and permanent data will be stored in the database so that means that 
the super computers will maintain only data farms whereas data centers will maintain a set of disks a set of servers set of nodes set of memory management tools and set of databases which are interconnected together kept in a wide area network in on premises location that is considered as a data center now what is data center networking data center networking is a structure or it is a process of establishing an interconnected or physically connected network based devices and equipment within the data center so if you observe the structure of data center it is establishing or a processing a set of interconnecting physical network based devices which are equipped interconnected together in a data center is known as data center network you consider an example for data center networking structure let us take an example of microsoft one of the leading cloud provider it is maintaining some data centers so remote locations in india as well as abroad so here the microsoft has maintaining data centers in the chicago area this is one of the famous famous area that has 1 lakh 8 core servers this number of servers and uh, 50 containers they are maintained in i in a microsoft data center the microsoft data center is running with 1 lakh 8 core servers this many number of count servers hosted in 50 different containers 50 different containers rooms containers means rooms so 1 lakh 8 thousand uh, cores servers we have been placed in 50 different remote locations in microsoft tech microsoft uh, software solutions so it seems to be the usage of data center is very high nowadays with the help of cloud computing technique for that we use a fundamental technique called as a scalability and uh, it is running with a huge network with thousands of interconnected interconnected software as well as hardware networks now consider a standard data center networking for a cloud we will discuss with a diagram now if you consider the architecture of a data center that is called as a standard data center the standard data center network which can be utilize the services of the cloud with the help of the internet now here there are three different layers this is a layer one top layer top layer occupies internet and the middle layer occupies fully data centers are loaded and the down most layer occupies various switching s transfer switches various switches and a stands for collection of rack servers which are interconnected together and here two uh, load balancing tools also we are maintaining so in this layer so the entire stand alone data center is broadly divided into three layers the top most one is internet so in the middle layer various data centers we are used the data centers occupies with the different um, uh, routers namely br stands for border uh, routers these two are border routers which can be kept on the border of layer 2 and layer 3 layer 3 and layer internet for internet and uh, four different uh, access routers also here we are uh, used which can be used well connected to the internet services so if you consider um, the uh, architecture of data center that is uh, see the working model how it is happened now we will start at the bottom level in the bottom level a collection of servers these are collection of servers a stands for rack of servers a collection of rack of servers 
uh, are kept in a bottom layer too and these servers are which are interconnected through fast um, switch as uh, at the hardware core there are various number of switches are available switch 1 switch 2 3 4 5 6 4 plus 2 six different switches are available and the servers are connected to the uh, switches so any number of servers which are connected to the switches once the servers are connected to the switches that means that the servers will be available will be enable the networking over a over an environment here once the switches are well interconnected to the servers that means that all the net all the servers are available are well connected to the networking here now the networking once the servers is uh, connected uh, to the uh, data centers through the routers the duty of router is if the routers will use a single IP address and it can provide or transfer the uh, data services uh, transferred or requested received from the server to the uh, cloud through an intermediate uh, technology that is called as the internet. So the data center is well connected uh, to the internet over here. With the help of uh, um, internet, they can host, they can retrieve the data from the database. So it uh, finally we can uh, say that whenever we want to access, whenever the end user or the customer or the consumer want to access the cloud computing services, first he need a internet. He need an internet what internet will do internet will provide a bridge between an end user and the cloud service provider so what initially the uh, so the end user will do the end user will send a request will host the data whatever he is having the end user is having an application he wants to host the application host the software into the cloud through the internet only so whenever whenever the end user transferring the data or hosting the data so the data will be converted in terms of packets and the packets will be transferred from one server machine to the cloud machine through the internet with the help of various nodes like the switches and various uh, um, <coughs> various uh, routers also here what is the duty of switch switch duty is which can establish an inter uh, networking among various computers various servers switches will provide the networking for various servers and client machines whereas whereas the routers will take the will convert the data packets which are received from the client machine and these are transmitted to the cloud uh, cloud through the internet connectivity here we in layer two we are maintained two nodes that is called as a lb stands for load balancing the main uses of this load balancing is which can manage or which can scale up or scale down automatically so whenever the traffic imposed on the servers so if there is a huge traffic imposed on a particular server at that time the servers will run with huge amount of the uh, traffic so to overcome the problem we need to balance the traffic over a particular server so we need to divert the traffic into uh, different servers in equal range of view. For that, we need to set up load balancing technique for uh, maintaining or for balancing the traffic among different servers over here. If you consider the um, trends of cloud uh, development nowadays, if you observe, so everything is automated now almost the industries the manufacturing sectors are moving uh, towards cloud uh, enabled technologies by using service oriented uh, technologies because are improving their business 
so that's why cloud computing will be very familiar uh, nowadays so if you observe the trends of the development of cloud computing from uh, initial to uh, initial to this uh, development uh, technology we will see in the next uh, uh, diagram we will observe now we will talk about the cloud development trends how it is so the most of the clouds uh, built in 2010 are uh, <coughs> public clouds only so initially public clouds are developed in the uh, mid of 2010 and the uh, others believe that most of the private clouds will grow the need of the demand of private clouds is very high uh, rather than the public clouds in future why because so the organizations or the uh, companies are uh, uh, <coughs> mainly focus for uh, establishing uh, new private clouds for their own purpose to make their uh, business very easily and provide the security for their company or individual organizations for that their, the best option is instead of uh, deploying their applications in a public cloud simply they use a private cloud so that's why there is a possibility of huge demand for private cloud rather than public clouds so once the private cloud uh, become mature and it will provide the better security uh, then the cloud will be converted public clouds in this case the uh, private clouds are converted into public clouds that means that if there is a secure and there is a trust in the private clouds so uh, later the private clouds will be moved to the public clouds why because they once the organization uh, needs to fulfill automatically we can say that it will automatically fulfill the end user Uh, needs also we can convert the public clouds into private clouds automatically when it will be proved so therefore the boundary between public cloud and private cloud could be blurred in the future and we need to establish one bridge between public and private cloud to overcome the problem we need to combine the services which are offered by the public as well as private so the best option for acting the public cloud and private cloud is hybrid cloud in the nature so in future hybrid cloud is in nature most of the companies will uh, move to hybrid uh, in nature because they can uh, utilize the services of private cloud as well as public cloud so both cloud activities they can combine and utilize the services with the help of the hybrid clouds that's why hybrid cloud is having more demand in future also so if you consider the cloud development trend so let us consider let us talk about uh, the trend how the uh, cloud will grow from initial stage to nowadays you will see here if you consider that initially from the scratch we used the industries are using mainframe so mainframe is also one of the software as a service the mainframe software services can be hosted into the market by ibm so simply we can call as a ibm mainframes so later on the ibm mainframes are aggregate upgraded as a personal computers or client server computers here the client server computer or personal computers came into the market in the second stage at the time there is a client machine and there is a server machine and there is a Uh, network established among client and server it is can be considered as a client server architecture or 2d architecture 2t architecture so that means that there is a direct connectivity between client and server client will send the request and server will receive the request and give the response to the client immediately through the networking mode that is called as a client server uh, <coughs> technology now the client server technology moved to internet technology so when the internet came into the picture the market the complete scenario of industries will be changed and the business ability also rapidly growing with the help of the internet technology internet will provide it can combine a collection of internet working concepts which are placed in different places through the routers they can manage different uh, um, networking capabilities once the internet came into the market next various uh, services will came into the market the first service is uh, web services the web services is aws 
so uh, major web services so some other web services came into the market so the web services will be uh, coded with xml coded with xml extensible markup language so now it is moved to another computing technique that is called as a grid computing so grid computing came into the market once the grid computing came into the market the huge uh, uh, the huge amount of problems are also solved very easily by applying divide and conquer rule so if you consider a complex problem you, you want to solve the complex problem no need to bother and no need to take much more time once the complex problem with your hand you need to split the complex problem into some number of equal uh, distributed grids and allocate each and every grid for one uh, computer machine we can allocate it and the computer will process the data simultaneously so all the uh, grids will process the data and they are combined together finally the problem will be solved very easily by uh, executing various methods at the same time in the grid computing the next grid computing is moved to network computing in the network computing various distributed computing techniques came into the picture once the distributed computing came into the picture so various networks are in, which are interconnected together due to which uh, there is a possibility of increasing htc i throughput computing which means that the computers which are working on networking computing never failures why because if one node will fail you automatically the traffic uh, or the processor on a particular computer will be moved to the or will be assigned to another computer which is located into the network so network computing is also this came into the picture and it is very successful in the market now the network computing will also uh, move towards um, another computing that is called as a utility computing so utility computing is nothing but uh, uh, various uh, different uh, types of computers are uh, which uh, are interconnected together in a particular uh, room that is called as a utility computing so that means that none of the computer machine or none of the server machine will sit idle so every computer services is fully utilized by the computing technique that is called as a utility computing so utility computing uh, main advantage is all the computers will be uh, kept into a working mode none of the computer will be sit idle so every component every server machine will come into the utilization of all the services so that is called utility computing now utility computing also moved towards the cloud computing so now the world will uh, using very effectively the help of the cloud computing you know, we can say that cloud computing is a computing technique so in which internet will play a vital role so that it can access and provide the services like access uh, the data which is posted onto the cloud very easily through the internet uh any one or any person will access the data uh, remotely by connecting uh, through the application so they can access the data and they can post the data whenever they required and wherever they are required through the internet these tasks will be performed so here all these web services grid computing network computing uh, utility computing and cloud computing these computing techniques will came into the market for most of the business driven Uh, web series with the help of the virtualization now when cloud came into the market virtualization is also embedded in that one once the virtualization is implemented in, in the cloud computing technique uh, that is uh, something created virtualized virtualized means not actual so we can create any number of computers virtual environment we can create in particular computer with the help of uh, virtualization so if you consider this uh, diagram the cloud development trends will rapidly grow from mainframe to the cloud computing nowadays so over a period of time so the business ability also uh, <clears throat> grown with the different tools and techniques only so now let us talk about another important concept is ecosystem uh, ecosystem means how the cloud Uh, ecosystem uh, will be uh, useful enabling technologies uh, how the cloud will be uh, useful for uh, our uh, ecosystem we'll discuss with a dry dramatic view here 
there are four different uh, layers are uh, namely the first one is a b c d a means uh, this is uh, uh, the top most one this is considered as a cloud ecosystem for building private clouds here in the top most one are considered as a consumers demand a flexible platform cloud computing consumers these are various cloud computing consumers the cloud con uh, cloud consumers are individual users users are considered as a consumers cloud providers are considered as a consumers and cloud services also considered as a cloud consumers here the duty of this individual users is always the individual users need raw infrastructure need raw infrastructure so suppose the end users wants an infrastructure they can simply connected through the cloud and access the infrastructure so here another one is cloud providers cloud providers there are various cloud providers available in the market their duty is they are maintaining some cloud service provider provide they are maintaining some some, some a cloud service provides um, the market on the rental basis if they are having the excess uh, resources uh, they can you need to outsource the excess workloads by pay as you demand another one is platform as a services this platform as a services need the resources on which the web or database and so on based on the customer needs if you want to uh, run your application over the platform the end users will uh, uh, need a platform as a services so like so these three will consider as a consumers demand flexible platform so they need based on the demand they need one flexible platform with the help of cloud consumers so the second layer here if you observe cloud management the cloud manager provides a virtual environment and virtual resources over the infrastructure as a service platform so here various cloud interfaces namely amazon elastic cloud too and uh, some other cloud uh, managements are available here the duty of cloud manager is provide the virtualized resources over the infrastructure as a services here see here uh, three different cloud um, uh, infrastructures namely amazon ec2 and other public clouds and eucalyptus is also under cloud and globus uh, nimbus is also under cloud open nebula is another cloud vm pair virtual mission pair vsphere is also these are well familiar cloud virtual uh, interfaces or cloud management whether <clears throat> they can provide the cloud manager will uh, create various uh, virtual machines over the cloud here and next one is virtual machine managers there are various uh, well familiar virtual machine managers are available in the market namely uh, intel xem server and uh, uh, microsoft vm where these are also various virtual managers the virtual managers uh, handle the virtual machines which are installed on the services over the network so it seems to be the cloud ecosystem and enabling techniques the cloud will be helpful in different ways in different scenarios it can be helpful for end users it can be helpful for managers and helpful for the customers whenever they require wherever they require the services so now uh, we uh, discuss some cloud service uh, models uh, there are uh, well uh, known service models are uh, categorized into three ways the first one is iaas stands for a uh, infrastructure as a service the next one is paas stands for platform as a service and the last one is um, <coughs> infrastructure platform and software as a service last one so what is a iaas infrastructure as a service so now let us see so infrastructure as a service these services will be provided by some of the cloud service providers some of the well known service providers iaa service providers are namely tata technologies they are providing telecom services they are providing telecom services to the end users 
so, and CP, they are providing also CP network services, they are providing Reliance also one of the infrastructure uh, service provider, they can provide some telephone networks also. Rack Space is also another uh, IAS provider. NetMagic and uh, one of the very important one is Amazon Web Services, they can provide infrastructure as a services. Now let us see what is infrastructure as a service. The infrastructure as a service is a model which allows the users to use virtual resources for computing, storing and network. Suppose for example, you have an application. To run the application, the end user is having an application. The end user wants to run the application. He need one infrastructure. He need one infrastructure like he need a networking. The end user required storage needs to maintain some servers to run the machine. To run the application, he need networking. He need to maintain storage. He need to maintain lack of servers. He need to maintain some other concepts. For that, he has only two ways. One is purchase it, purchase the networking component or purchase the servers. For that, he needs to spend a lot of money. Lot of amount he needs to spend. To overcome the problem, the best solution is he approach the cloud service providers who are offering infrastructure as a service on a rental basis. That is the best solution. So what is the duty of infrastructure as a service cloud providers the cloud providers main duty is they can provide infrastructure as a service to the end users on rental basis here the entire infrastructure like the storage the networking and the security and the space everything maintained by the cloud providers only the end user need not bother he simply connected his application to the cloud and utilized the cloud service providers infrastructure as a services through the internet whenever he required, wherever that he required by paying the rental amount. He don't bother about other, he don't bother about the maintenance of the components also. So far that we well familiar with IAAs. In short, the services is performed by rented cloud infrastructures so various uh, well familiar cloud providers which are offering the infrastructure as a services on the rental basis also the end users can deploy and run their applications over his chosen operating system on the rental services they are offering by the cloud services so here the user does not manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure here once the end user purchased or once the end user not purchased once the end user connected to the iaas providers the end user is not managed the end user not controlled and everything the managing and controlling can be done by the cloud provider only the end user don't bother about the maintenance and the controlling of servers or the machines, but has control over the operating system, storage, deployed applications, and possibility select networking components. So these are various types of operating systems, various types of networking, various types of storage devices kept are available over the cloud services providers the end user will select the best and reliable one among availability available services based on his requirement if we consider the public cloud infrastructure as a services some of well well familiar cloud names listed here amazon ec2 elastic cloud tool uh, go grid cloud rack space cloud these clouds are best examples for public cloud providing providing infrastructure as a services to the end users so let us take an example of amazon elastic cloud 2 
this is a public cloud it can provide infrastructure as a services to the end users so but they can maintain some infrastructure like virtual machines they are maintaining you consider the amazon ec2 the amazon ec2 virtual machine run with up to 20 processors the virtual machine running with 20 processors not a single processors so the processor they are using one application programming interface or tool is web services they are using amazon web services they are using for providing the interface for the virtual machine and the amazon ec2 cloud is using one software for providing virtual environment over the system with the help of hypervisor or guest operating system some of the well familiar hypervisors are intel xcn machine or linux operating system and microsoft windows operating systems they are used to consider another example go grid go grid is also another example cloud service provider the go grid cloud service provider virtual machine if we observe it is running with uh, six times six more than five that means that the cpu capacity is uh, six cpus work like as a six different cpus which are interconnected together central processing units which are interconnected together and they can run and they are using some uh, tools for uh, accessing the infrastructure as a services to the end users through some of the well familiar uh, tools are java they can provide one environment infrastructure as a services java jdk and uh, java virtual machine also they are using php python and ruby are well familiar application programming interfaces java will provide java api python will provide python api ruby is a software which will provide ruby api when you use go grid so here hypervisors and guest machines are also same like uh, intel xcn linux and windows also so another one is rack space cloud this is another familiar cloud so most of the us based companies are using this uh, rack space clouds and here each instance of your virtual machine running with four four uh, central processing units so with the help of application programming interfaces like java dot net and c hash uh, php and python so here the hypervisors are just os is used are gen or linux only now here we can consider the uh, mode uh, <clears throat> the service levels and the cloud service models with the different uh, levels if you observe like infrastructure level platform level and software level if you consider here the end user a uh, wants to communicate the services offered by the client in different scenarios with the help of software as a services platform as a services and infrastructure as a services and also one more one more is deas database as a services and finally they can communicate to the uh, distributed file systems how we will see consider the end user the duty of end user is he wants to host the applications or the data over the cloud or he wants to retrieve the data which was posted onto the cloud he has two options the end user may access the data posted onto the cloud and the end user wants to host the data onto the cloud with the help of the internet only so whenever he required wherever he required he can simply retrieve the data and access the data anywhere anytime through the internet only by using the services as software as a services platform as a services and infrastructure as a services if you consider the software as a services what the end user will do is the end user will connect to the cloud will connect it to the cloud if you want to access his application with the software as a services client interface so the end user is having an application the application runs with a software so he is not having the software license what he will do he can connect to the 
the client machine uh, he can connect to the cloud computing the cloud computing will provide the software what he requires and the software as a services the end user will connect it to the software as a services to the internet and whenever he require wherever he require so he can access the software and he can uh, run the applications over the software for the cloud so another one is pass platform as a services in the platform as a service says the end user is having an application he wants to host the application in a cloud platform so he want to launch his application he need one platform so for that many cloud platforms are available he can uh, launch the um, application he can uh, monitor the application and he can billing the application and he can provide the services on the platform as a services with the help of platform as services and next one is iaas infrastructure as a services whenever the end user wants to utilize infrastructure as a services he can able to establish various clusters cloud various uh, servers various uh, networks so for that he a huge on premises uh, uh, room is required for establishing the infrastructure over a period of time to overcome the problem simply he can uh, take the services through the cloud service providers they are offering infrastructure as a services the infrastructure as a services in the cloud mode they are maintaining a collection of a collection of or a stack of servers which are interconnected together so they can communicate with the masters and slaves and they can provide the network among distributed file systems they can distribute the files from one machine to another machine through the distributed file systems and finally they can have the interaction with the uh, database server with the help of another um, services is called database as a services it seems to be the end user or the customer can effectively utilize the services in different scenarios over the cloud with the help of the internet like software as a services platform as a services infrastructure as a services and the database as a services whenever he required wherever he will required he can have two options either he can host the services over the cloud he can access the services which are hosted in the cloud automatically whenever he require wherever he require by paying the amount of rental to the cloud service providers so let us see platform as a services the platform as a services is a second cloud service model here so only the end user will maintain only the applications and data and the rest of will maintain the platform as a services here the networking tools the software tools the stores the networking tools the storage for the storage stack, the collection of our stack of servers and servers also here database servers and also software software means virtualization if you want to provide an virtual machine over the uh, over the uh, machine you need to establish one hypervisors and the host operating systems and the middleware softwares and we can provide one environment runtime environment all this will be maintained by platform as a services by a cloud provider here the three first three will be maintained by us networking storage and the servers these are considered as a ia stands for infrastructure as a services whereas platform means infrastructure plus these both are considered as a platform as a services so if you want to build or create a platform as a service model the end users develop and deploy their uh, applications whenever they require wherever they require through the internet mode this platform as a service cloud is an integrated computer system consisting of both hardware and software that means that platform as a service is nothing but it is a collection of hardware and software here hardware components are networking storage and servers these considered as a hardware part and software part is a virtualization operating system middleware and runtime this is called a software infrastructure a combination of both hardware infrastructure and a software infrastructure that can be maintained in a single uh, place to provide the services to the end users that is called as a platform as a services 
here the end user application can be developed on the virtualized cloud platform using some programming languages or software tools which are supported for uh, paas like java java act as a platform as a services or a, um, java we can consider as a java is a platform indip uh, dip independent always we can say that why java is a platform independent so we can uh, any operating system can access uh, java can access uh, run in any operating system in respect of operating system java can execute their programs so that's why we can consider that java is a platform independent uh, so uh, for java is one of the software tool which can support for platform and services and python also one of the familiar tool supports in support for pas dotnet is also familiar tool which can support for platform and services you can see the the table here some of uh, public cloud clouds uh, which are uh, offering platform as a services and uh, namely public clouds are listed here some of the well familiar public clouds namely google app engine is considered as a public cloud salesforce.com is also another public cloud microsoft azure is public cloud amazon ec2 elastic Two is under public cloud. Anaka is under public cloud. These are considered as a public cloud. Public clouds. These public clouds will be offering some, uh, some uh, services over the internet, namely platform as a services. So the Google App Engine will provide one uh, tool. Various tools they are using. IDE. IDE starts means Eclipse IDE. Uh, Eclipse IDE is acted as a tool or developers they can use the tool. for uh, executing the uh, softwares <clears throat> and here map reduce this is also another programming model uh, which can be uh, used for uh, huge data uh, to perform some big data concepts and here some of the applications which are developed with the help of paas uh, google app engine or web applications or big data tables like that various uh, listed here now very important one is google app engine for paas application it has taken application platform as a service best example for platform as a services is google app engine google is a software company they are maintaining one they are developed one app engine that is called as a google app engine that acted as a platform as a service google what google app engine will do let us see here consider that the graph here the google app engine this is a cloud this is a cloud what the cloud is having internally the cloud is having set of servers these are set of servers or set of computers which are interconnected together and a collection of data base a collection of database or data centers which are placed here in the cloud and also here we use one tool that is called as a load balancer tool on the top of data and servers we placed one tool that is called as a google load balancing the google load balancing tool is acted as a is acted as a tool which can distribute the traffic imposed on the cloud equally distributed the traffic to the different servers whenever the end users wants to request send a request whenever the end user here end users end users want to connect the cloud by accessing the cloud resources and they can post the resources onto the cloud suppose the end users send a request to one protocol called http request the end user send one request through hypertext transfer protocol the request will received to one interface that is called end user interface 
that request will passed to the google cloud here the google load balancing balancer will receive all the requests from the end users suppose the cloud capacity is 1 lakh that means that the cloud will run at a time only 1 lakh members if more than 1 lakh persons will try to send the request at the same time all 1 lakh request will be all 1 lakh requests will be uh, <coughs> in queue in google load balancer the load balancer will run with a huge data traffic of 1 lakh requests it can it cannot send all 1 lakh request to a particular server what the load balancer will do the load balancer will distribute the 1 lakh request to all available servers equally so that means that all servers will run with the same number of load same number of workload they are running so due to which the pressure will be degraded distributed among all the servers so once the request is received by the servers and the server will give the response respond it the servers will respond and send the servers will receive the request and automatically the server will respond and the server will send the response to the user interface and the through the http responses the end users will receive the data that means that there is direct communication between end user and the cloud computer client send a request through the user interface user interface will connect it to the cloud through the load balancer and the server will receive the request and the server will give the response and the response will deliver to the user so client server communication will be established but but always the end users are looking for innovations the end users is looking for innovations based on the end user requirements the cloud should maintain should upgrade the demand based on the demand the cloud should be upgraded automatically that can be done by end you that can be done by the admin console the admin console the entire cloud will be maintained by one person he can consider as a admin console the admin console will maintain the cloud like google app engine cloud so whatever the data available whatever the data required so the end the uh, uh, app engine admin console will manage and monitor the traffic onto the cloud with the help of the load balancing only suppose the demand or the utilization of cloud is very high so based on the demand the servers will automatically scale up or scale down their resources automatically so for that here load balancers will automatically scale up or scale down the traffic over the network so the uh, cloud the uh, <coughs> they the cloud machines will automatically add the new servers or add the new software or add the new infrastructure whenever based on Thank you.